Hey YouTube, okay, so, this is a video that I've been trying to make for a little while now. Around the time that I got sick back in October, I kind of stopped using this computer. This is the Dual Optron box, um, that I still don't have a set name for yet. Uh, really a set host name. I have a temporary one. I'll get to that a little later. But... I, I don't know what I'm going to really like call this on the network for the long run. Uh, but this is a video I want to do for a little while now. Uh, showing this sucker off. Uh, just a little bit. A uh, few changes I've made since October. Or September, October, whenever it was the last one that I did of this particular box. And things to come. As far as what I'm going to uh, really be using this for and why do I have all these hard drives in this yada yada that those sort of questions I'm going to answer in this video here so again this is my dual opt box. box uh, it's got a in-win mana 134 computer case uh, I've got two fans on the side panel here these are both the uh, Cougar 120 millimeters I can't remember the actual model off hand up top, which is actually a little bent in a little bit, but it still doesn't affect it. I've got two Kingwin 120mm. These uh, these two Cougars I got on sale two for one off of Newegg, and the two Kingwins came from Micro Center. Um, up here I've also got my X120E. Uh, this is the dual Optron box. I'm actually uh, remote desktoped into it. Oh, with, uh, I've got Windows 7 Ultimate, so I can remote desktop with, uh, Arrow. So, let me go ahead and, uh, Arrow, which I have not riced yet. Let's see here. Yep, oh, I have my finger over the microphone again. I gotta stop that. Uh, it's got two dual-core Opteron 285s at 2.6 gig, you know, 2.6 gigahertz each. Uh, these are showing 2.61 for some reason. I'm going to have to take a look into that. Uh, 12 gigs of DDR1 ECC uh, RAM. It's a PC3200R. This is registered ECC, uh, fully buffered RAM. Uh, running Windows 7 Ultimate, 64-bit, as I said. And this is the set host name that I have for it right now, but not the one that I'm going to be uh, putting, it, putting on in the future. Hello. Hi, Tommy. What are you doing? What are you doing? You silly kitty cat, what are you doing here? Come on. I did not ask for you to be my video. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah. 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 What are you do? Oh, oh. I felt that shock, too. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, go, go over and play with the shoes. Okay. So, yeah, you can obviously tell I'm in uh, RDP. On this box because that should be something else, I guess. Um, let's go in here. Windows Experience Index. Please get away from the computer while I'm doing this video, you silly cat. Um, yeah, Tommy's new too. We just got him about uh, a month ago. He's like a year and a half old. Uh, you see, the even though the Experience Index really doesn't matter in this case, uh, this is with both CPUs. This is with all the memory in it, and then of course you got 7.3 for uh, the 550 Ti that I have in here. I'll go into that in a little bit as well. And then of course this did transfer it to 5.3. I'm still using the 200 gig drive as my boot drive, only because I don't really feel a need to go any faster with it, uh, because it pretty much saturates the entire uh, ATA channel as, as I really need. Plus, shit still starts up really fast. Like uh, this, for instance. And in here I'll show you the, the temp of everything. You see, uh, the second one is running five, uh, on average, five degrees uh, hotter than the second CPU. Even though I did something crafty. I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, you see, 46 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature of the Enforce controller. Oh, come on! I had my finger over the friggin' button again. The, the microphone. Okay, so as you see, uh, 46 degrees Celsius, that's the Enforce controller. This is how hot the 550 Ti is running. 
34, 35 degrees Celsius. Usually on average it's about 30, but right now I don't know exactly why everything's running a little hotter than it usually is. Usually these are in the 20 something degrees Celsius at range. This is like 30, and this is around 42, and uh, the top one is usually around 36, and this one's around 40. So it, it's probably the temperature in the room. Yeah, I'm starting to feel it over here. So there might be something going wrong, uh, wrong there. We'll see. Uh, now without uh, touching the microphone, yeah, let me go over here and close this up. Uh, this is surprisingly fast, just over 10 100 even. If you take a look at the back here, I've only got a keyboard, which I really don't need plugged in, and, and the LAN. I'm using this headless. I also found a nice cover for the onboard uh, VGA going to that Rage chip that I'm never going to use and I have disabled. Uh, there's the 550Ti. Uh, here's my big ass antenna for my 802.11G card, which I'm going to possibly replace with a 802.11N card soon. Uh, there's the Auto G2ZS and my power supply. Uh, Alright, so that said, yeah, I love my little X120E here. Alright, let's go ahead and open up the panel. Okay, and we're in. Here's those two Cougar fans I was talking about. I have on here. Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and disconnect these. And the model number on these is CFV12HP. I got these two for one back in around uh, September or so. Uh, August, whenever it was that I was putting this together. Okay. And here's the rest of the machine. There's uh, the two Opterons, uh, both with Zellman TNP5X heat sinks on them. Uh, one is turned the other way, and I have intake going over here so that it gets a direct uh, line of cold air because otherwise, flipping the other way, it would get just it would just get cold air out the other heat sink. I can feel some heat here on both of them, so that that's a good thing. But I'm feeling more on this one than I am this one. So that's causing me some concern only because they're about the same temperature, but they're not the same temperature on the heat sink. Which means that there's probably some sort of bad thermal contact someplace happening. And I'm not getting uh, heat transferred like I should. Um, see, sort of up in there. I mean, you need to get a flashlight. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't have a flashlight handy, it looks like. <sighs> Damn it. Now we had the, the whole power outage dealy with uh, Hurricane Sandy, so... Oh, wait, 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 wait. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I find a flashlight here and it doesn't even have any uh, juice in it. <sighs> That's just some bullshit. Okay. So... I don't have a I don't have a flashlight here. So we're just gonna have to wing this, I guess. Maybe. Maybe. Flashlight, flashlight. Flashlight, flashlight, flashlight. Uh yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to wing this here. I'm gonna see about turning this down. I'll put the X120 over here. So now the X120 is off. I have a little label here that says do not turn off for re the various reasons that people will come and uh, I don't want them to come into uh, the room that this is in and just shut it off on me. Just go right here. Gently put this down on its side. We can get some better lighting in here. Okay. So what we've got over here is we've got four slots of six over here. And two over here, scrunched in between the heat sinks and the graphics card. Um, this totals 12 gigs. There's two gigs on the one, and there's uh, no, there's four gigs on the one, and there is uh, eight gigs on the other. Uh, I don't know exactly why Tyann did this. And I'm not exactly sure why it wasn't four and four, or two and two. But I guess in the sake of having uh, more RAM, they gave the one four instead of giving them both two or something like that. 
Of course, this is a really uh, scrunched up board. If you take a look at the successor to this, the S2895, uh, this is the S2877 tie-in uh, KWE board. Uh, it actually has more space because it's an extended ATX board. This one does not have so much space. It's very cramped, but uh, the stuff performs well, so I'm not complaining that much. And the only X16 slot here, I've got uh, a GTX 550 Ti 1 gig. I think it's a 1 gig. Maybe it's a 2 gig. I don't exactly know. You know what? Let's ask Specky. And, yeah, got a little wise box here I gotta fix. Graphics say, hmm, okay, physical memory, one gig. And I've got virtual two gigs of memory mapped someplace, I guess. Maybe it's, I really don't know. In the back there, that, uh, that fan's a Cooler Master fan. I guess it came with it. I don't know. There's also another one up here someplace in the front panel alongside a Nantec. There's there's really some decent airflow going on here. Now, these are like like room temperature or my my hands temperature sort of up here. It's really cool though. Uh, I got a fan up here. This is an, uh, up up in here. There's a Scythe Ultra Case 120 millimeter fan that uh, I have on the lowest setting at five volts and. Uh, after staying at 5 volts for a long time, it hasn't really uh, given me much problems as far as uh, noise. It used to be uh, very noisy. It has this, this like, um, buzzing to it at 5 volts. It went away. I don't exactly know why it was doing that, but we'll see what, what uh, that really brings up. Uh, there's my Audi G2ZS wireless card, which is some sort of a Belkin one with an Athros chip on it. Again, that's the 550 Ti. It's got motherboard power going to it. You see, I, I took a little bit of uh, time with some cable management in the box here, but not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot that can be done, like over down in here where these uh, wires and stuff are. There's not a whole lot that I can do with it. I can only scrunch so much into it. Uh, and then I've got my power supply here, which is an OCZ Mod Extreme Pro 600 watt. Model number OCZ 600 MXSP. It's a very nice power supply for the price. It's great. It's like uh, a very decent price for its price uh, price range, uh, price point, price range, or whatever the word is. It's great. Get them. OCZ power supplies aren't shit anymore. Especially the mod extremes. They're not really shit. Besides uh, counting the fact that at least 80% of all power supplies that are on the market right now are just rebranded Deltas. Uh, it's true. Look it up. Uh, and I've got one PCI slot here that's not taken up with anything. I'm probably going to leave it blank because of the fan, uh, just just for fan clearance, but I'm probably not. I'm probably going to move the, uh, the, the, uh, what, what do you call it, the wireless card up. Again, it's like 2.30 and, uh, 2.45 in the, mor in the morning here, so bear with me. Yeah. <laughs> probably going to move the wireless card up because it's not blocking it that much, even if at all. And I'll put some, I'll put something else in the bottom slot there between the video card and it. We'll see what happens. Uh, not through the video card, the graphics card in it. Uh, if you also see there, I've got some MOSFETs right there, and also up there in the corner, you can sort of see it. It's sort of shadowed. Uh, I really need to get some heat sinks for them because right now, yeah, you know, touching them right now, uh, they're not that, they're not that hot. Mm. I keep my finger there for about 10 seconds. They do get a little hot on the finger. That's something uh, to be worried about in my, uh, my book. So I'll probably get some sort of a custom-made heatsink or something for them. We'll see how that goes. Uh, you can see I've got some IDE cables down there. Uh, and some more spaghetti uh, for the ports and stuff. Over here, got some SATA spaghetti. Uh, blue and yellow wires because that's all I had at the time of building this. I'm probably going to remove them all and get 90 degree uh, wires that go out this way because that's how they have to go up and out so I can just take them out and then put them up either in this hole right here or the next hole down there. Uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And I've got my hard drive here. This is the fun part. This is the 200 gig boot. This is an 80 gig that I put in. That's for swap. And then this one's one terabyte. Uh, this one looks like it's 2 terabyte, 2 terabyte, and this is a 500 gig Hitachi Death Star that I'm probably going to replace. Not that it's been giving me problems, but because I just don't have the need for a 500 gig drive. So I'm probably going to replace the 500 gig drive and the 1 terabyte drive with either 2 or 3 terabyte drives, depending on what kind of a deal I can get in about 6 months. This isn't something that I'm working on to be ready as far as those two drives within so uh, so little time. Uh, the other thing that I have going on for me here is I've also got that uh, 4X PCI Express slot there. If I can find a RAID card that can go in there that has some decent, uh, uh, I, I guess, slimming features to it, where it's not blocked, where I guess it'll, it can block like half the fan and I'll still be okay. Just have to turn the fan speed up a little bit. Uh, as if I can find a slim enough card to go into that slot, I should be okay to uh, use that and run the wires out and or try to snake it around or something. That way I can at least put a, another drive in this bay. However, I'm fine as it is. Uh, other thing to consider here is I have two cables running here. There's one IDE drive on each channel. This has the primary... Uh, primary channel, this has the secondary channel. They're both masters on both channels. So, writing to the drive from a SATA drive, I can easily hit 100 megabytes a second if I try. And that's with large files. Not with small files, with large files. So, there's uh, definitely some, uh, there's definitely a couple pros there for having uh, uh, just a single drive on each ATA, uh, PETA, PETA, IDE, whatever the freak you want to call it, uh, channels there. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay with it the way it is. So I'm going to keep this as such, that way I have the bigger drives for other shit. And this, this is actually still a great drive. I don't, I haven't had any problems with it, uh, given that I got it, uh, pretty much for free out of, uh, someone's dying computer they just said here have it take it and it's been running it's been running fine uh, and then the other one I guess yeah the other one is an Apple uh, firmware branded uh, 80 gig and I use that for scratch and swap uh, that way none of the other drives have to deal with it not even the boot drive so that one will start up every so often when I need swap if I need swap. I've got 12 gigs of friggin' DDR in here. What do I need swap for? Uh, the thing's actually really fast to have, uh, for having DDR RAM in it. Uh, whatever the ECC and then all of the different advanced memory options that I have in the BIOS, I'm still kind of learning what some of those are and I'm en enabling stuff as I go along. But within the last few months of just playing around with stuff in the BIOS, the memory has just gotten a hell of a lot faster. The temperatures of the actual uh, DIMMs themselves I uh, haven't gone up or anything, but everything's just gotten a hell of a lot faster. So, I don't know if it's something that I did in the BIOS, or if it's just, uh, something, uh, I did in Windows, uh, an update or something, but this thing's just been flying. Uh, so I'm gonna keep Windows 7 on this for as long as I can, and then when Windows 7, uh, gets, uh, I, I guess, end of life in 2020, if this thing is still around, Maybe I'll uh, up it to Linux. Or maybe even sometime in the future. Uh, remember, we've only got about seven years until 2020 now. So, I mean, we're, we're uh, like a third of the way through the decade. So, I'm probably going to stick with Windows as long as I can on this box. Unless I really need Windows... Uh, unless I really need something else besides Windows, I'm just going to keep Windows on this box. There's no real reason for me to have Linux on it, even though at least... <coughs> oh no, I'm getting sick again. No, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, 99% uh, of all the hardware in this box is Linux compatible. I'm pretty sure that I'm probably going to have some problems with the, the OIG 2ZS, but every single other piece of... Uh, of stuff in here that needs a driver 
doesn't have any problem with Linux. I mean, it's got Broadcom Gigabit, for one. It's got an Enforce uh, network uh, controller on the Enforce chip. The Enforce chipset itself has very good Linux support, from what I understand. Uh, I've got loads and loads of boatloads of RAM. I've got two Opterons. Hell, hey, I've got the perfect makings for an AMD 64 box here. Um, the IDE and SATA controllers, from my understanding, are both on the Enforce chipset as well. But I could be wrong about that. There could be a little chip some here, someplace around here that is taking care of the hard drives themselves, or the IDE drives at least. Uh, USB and stuff I don't have to worry about. That's compatible on pretty much everything, unless you're using like NT4 on one of these thing, freaking things. But hey, who runs NT4 on a dual Optron box, right? Right? So, I can switch to Linux whenever the hell I want to, pretty much, and I'll have no repercussions as far as hardware. I can just keep on using the shit that I'm using. I mean, as long as I use the uh, binary blob NVIDIA puts out for their GTX cards and shit, the GeForce cards, which isn't a problem for me. I don't really give a shit about that, as long as it works. Uh, I'm not taking the, the free tart approach here. I'm taking the uh, Linus Torvalds. Does it fucking work? If it fucking works, use it. Approach. So we'll see how far that goes. Uh, the other thing I really want to point out with this box, if you take a look right in there, you'll see that 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 blue background thing. That's not the VGA uh, port. That's a serial port. So that would also come in handy if I moved over to Linux because I can use some sort of a serial console device, such as uh, I'll I'll put this out there, a VT220. So. Well, let's put it that way. I can use one of those if I wanted to. Um, other things I'm going to have to do, if that's the case, is maybe I'll just put a USB 3.0 uh, card there instead. And just uh, snake that through so I can use the USB 3 ports on this uh, front case here. Which are these two, and also this. Uh, the other thing I want to try to do uh, within the next couple months, if at all possible, is try to find a way to get this little connector here, which is the same kind of connector as you'd find on a Dell computer uh, for their front panels on most of the older ones. I don't have a good example here, but I used to. Uh, and get it to hook up to these ports up here. There's no set way in stone. Hello, microphone. How are you doing? There's no set way in stone to get these hooked up to that port there. Because it was un... It's pretty much undocumented as to how that's uh, pinned out. So, I can either do that or run cables along here that, that connect up to here, like extension cables, sort of, that are plugged in and jacked in with all that sort of stuff. Run them underneath the fans next to the uh, cards there, out one of these um, water cooling pipe uh, things and into the back of the sound card so that I can use shit up here, like headphones and stuff, without having to uh, reach behind and unhook stuff in the back of the monitor, uh, the back of the computer itself. That's something I'm thinking about. And we'll see how far that goes. Uh, other stuff that I'd like to do within the next little while is get different heat sinks. I mean, these are great, but they don't fit the bill for what I'm looking for, really. Uh, although, these are pretty much the only ones that'll fit uh, right now. So, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to see if I can find uh, heat sinks that will meet my uh, goal here. Uh, let me just give you something here to... Uh, Figure, uh, to figure out the size uh, comparison here. This is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus. Uh, if I were to put this right here, I've got about that much space, like right there, that I can do. So I've got more than enough space to hold one of these. And I've got more than enough, looks like I've got more than enough uh, space on the side here to have it going up and down, holding it just, just up enough. I've got more than enough space underneath, more than enough of a gap, even though that's definitely not the, the gap size. I can hold a 212 Plus in here, no problem. My problem is uh, I need to be able to uh, have a heatsink that will either, one, use the AMD uh, stock heatsink uh, bracket, or use the bracket holes that'll 
hook into the back plate and have it so that I could just take the IHS cap off and do it direct to core, which I would like to do because having the, the uh, IHS on here is really stunting uh, the temperature gains. So we'll see what that, where that goes in a little while. I may find something, I may not find something, it really depends. I'm going to try uh, maybe one or two of the junkier, like Logisys branded ones that I know will definitely fit on here, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to see about putting the Hyper 212 Plus on one of these. I know it's probably not supported, like Frozen CPU I think it was, or it was one of these different websites that said that it was compatible. But I can't find any way where you'd be able to hook it up. I mean, it's got the, the bracket here. But I don't know if this is supposed to go... Yeah, this looks like it's just the, the backplate bracket to, uh, to me. This would have to go on. You'd have the... You have the screws go... Through these middle holes, which is what I need. So it would go, like, right here like that. But how does it go on afterwards? Because this is more than definitely, yeah, that's not even, that doesn't even look tapered. This is like, this is definitely how this, uh, this would be on the on the back side, so. Uh, there might be some sort of a way to, to, to do it with this sort of a thing, like, just like that, and just have the, the one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to, to go. So, I'm going to look into that, see if anybody's really put a 212 Plus on a 939 and see if it's going the correct way that they need it to. If not, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to need to find some sort of another heat sink to put on these. So, uh, I'm coming up here on about 27 minutes. If anybody has a heat sink recommendation for me to look into for these, note that this would be the way on a standard motherboard that it would be facing. So these are facing, this would be going upwards on your uh, standard 939 motherboard. This is socket 940, and it's facing this way so that it can go into uh, a server-like uh, environment, pretty much. So it, it would be facing this way or the other way. It would be facing going that way up towards the top of the case, if you were looking at it like that. And I need it so it'll go 90 degrees the other way, uh, going out the back. Or if you can find me something that goes this way uh, out, uh, out the side so that I can go upwards out the top. Mind you, I've got some uh, space uh, restrictions here. <clears throat> so if I were to take this 212 Plus and place it here, you see I don't really have that much space. Uh, if I were to put this on the other side, it would overlap. So I don't have a whole lot of space between the sockets. So my only option is really to have them in this sort of a configuration, if not having this flipped around the other way as it was. But that's not the ideal uh, situation because this one runs uh, 5 degrees hotter on average facing the other way as well. Uh, but it, now it's doing it the other way, meaning that it's probably too hot in here. Someone probably turned the heat up to 80 and I'm just now feeling it. So, uh, any questions or recommendations that you guys can give me out there, I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm just... Uh, feeling a little overwhelmed with what I've gotten myself into here with this. Uh, just for the record though, uh, last last notes. These SATA ports on here, these four SATA ports, they're SATA 2. They're not SATA 1. This board is from like 06 and I would guess this to be one of the uh, better part of maybe like one of the first uh, SATA 2 wheeling server boards. I really can't confirm or deny that. So uh, it does have SATA 2, which surprised me when I got it, so, but it does not have the little, uh, thing there for that, the, um, 80 port, uh, display. That's just etched into it, uh, to show you where it would go. I don't like that. So, you guys, questions, recommendations, let me know. Uh, leave me a message, uh, subscribe if you want to. I've had some people subscribe to me within the last couple months. That really surprised me. This has been not really putting out videos. Uh, maybe my videos are just that interesting? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, questions, recommendations uh, for me to look into, and anything else. Send me a message on uh, YouTube. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe.